A heat wave warning in the northeast. Tripura shut schools, schools and colleges shut in Bengal. 13 die over heat stroke at a, a government award event in Maharashtra. Attended by the Home Minister, nine of the 13 dead are women. The opposition asked for an inquiry into the deaths. The former Chief Minister Shetar quits the BJP, joins the Congress, an ex-CM and ex-Deputy CM and four legislators have quit the BJP over tickets after the BJP's new strategy of bringing in new faces. Rishi Sunak faces uh, the UK Parliament probe over his wife's business interests. The British Parliament's Commissioner for Standards opens an investigation into the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. <coughs> and India gets its first Apple store. India's first official store is opening up in Mumbai tomorrow followed by a Delhi opening two days later. The launch comes as Apple celebrates more than 25 years in India. Apple boss Tim Cook is in India to greet customers. A heat wave has gripped parts of India. The IMD has issued an orange alert for West Bengal. According to the IMD, Mumbai and several parts of Maharashtra are reeling under heat wave conditions. And though Delhi is far from a heat wave, the temperatures will still be approximately 4 degrees higher than normal for this time of the year. The maximum temperatures will be in the range of 40 to 42 degrees Celsius over many parts of the plains of northwest India and adjoining Madhya Pradesh and East India. The IMD says the maximum temperatures are above normal by 3 to 5 degrees Celsius over many parts of the northwest, east and northeast of India. And 13 people have died of a heat wave. This while attending an award event uh, called by the Maharashtra government. 13 people have now died due to heat stroke after they attended this large public gathering in the open in Navi Mumbai. Over 50 others have been admitted to hospitals. Dozens are suffering from dehydration because of standing and sitting there in the heat to attend this government program in the presence of the Union Home Minister, Amit Shah. Almost 10 lakh people had gathered for nearly five hours on this open ground where social worker Appa Saheb Dharmadikari was to be honoured with the Maharashtra Bhushan in the presence of Union Minister Amit Shah, Chief Minister Eknath Shinde and Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis. The event began at 10.30 am and people sat out in the open for hours under the blazing sun with no pandal or shade to provide any protection. Despite drinking water supply and 75 ambulances, by 1 p.m. people started collapsing. 13 people died due to heat stroke, nine of them women. According to Panvel Municipal Corporation, many of them were brought dead to the hospital. Brought dead to the hospital. hospital in the Panvel, there were 18 patients in the उसमें से आठ पेशेंट जो है वो जनरल वार्ड में थे तीन पेशेंट क्रिटिकल आईसीयू में थे तीन पेशेंट जो है वो महिला वार्ड में हैं और एक जो पेशेंट है अभी डिस्चार्ज होना बाकी है वो अठारह जो में थे उसमें से एक की डेथ हो गई है जो बाकी बचे थे उसमें से सात पेशेंट सभी डिस्चार्ज हुए हैं एटीन पीपल � फिर घर पे निकले तभी धूप से ज़्यादा धूप लगने के कारण चक्कर आ गई थी। तो आप वहाँ पर गिर गए थे निकलते समय? हाँ निकल मैं रोड पे गिर गया मैं। धूप से बहुत निकल गए हम। तो उधर थोड़ा सा चक्कर आया मुझे। तो उस समय कहाँ बताएँगी किस कंडीशन में थे क्या हुआ था? कोई सीवर था कोई ऐसी था नॉर्मल भी थे लोग आए थे उनका ठीक जो लोग सीवर थे उनकी संख्या क्या है उनकी क्या स्थिति है उनकी ठीक हो रहे हैं जल्दी जल्दी ट्रीटमेंट � वो श्री सदस्य को साथ में लेके हमने किया था लेकिन कल की जो घटना है वो दुर्दैवी है और उसका कोई राजनीति के लिए उपयोग न करे सरकार को ये जानकारी होनी चाहिए थी कि लाखों लोग आएंगे और जिस तरह का ऊपर तापमान है गर्मी है 
चालीस से भी ज़्यादा पारा ऊपर गया था तो ये सब जानकारी सरकार को होनी चाहिए थी लेकिन ये प्रोग्राम शाम को होना चाहिए था जब सूरज ढलता है लेकिन हमारे गृह मंत्री जी को शाम का टाइम नहीं था दोपहर को ले लिया तो उनकी व्यवस्था देखने के लिए ये अव्यवस्था की The tragedy should serve as a warning to political parties and others not to take the summer heat lightly with Pooja Bharadwaj in Mumbai Uma Sudhir NDTV And now schools and colleges in Kolkata and several districts of Bengal will remain closed for a week from the 17th of April because of these heat wave like conditions the education department of West Bengal's government has issued a notice announcing the closure the temperatures in Kolkata have been hovering around 41 degrees celsius for the past few days that's according to IMD records many including children have been taken ill because of the scorching heat Uh, the IMD says that the heat wave conditions will prevail over parts of the country for the next few days and with no rain or relief in sight several state governments are taking steps to tackle the problem and the big international story right now the british parliament's commissioner for standards has now opened up an investigation into the prime minister rishi sunak earlier this month now this it has now emerged and become news because uh, of the list of open inquiries was posted on uh, its website on monday and uh, the list said that the matter under investigation was a declaration of interest the inquiry began on the 13th of april let's go across to uh, my colleague uh, radhika ayer who's monitoring this story so radhika we know from the list that the matter under investigation is a declaration of interest an inquiry has begun on the 13th what what more can you tell us what is this inquiry about well all mps of the british parliament must as a rule declare their ministerial interests personal interests business interests and um, this time uh, the well i said this time because it's not the first time that rishi sunak is facing a probe or akshata murthy his wife is facing a probe uh, or has come under scanner This time it appears that uh, there is a business interest and Rishi Sunak's wife Akshata Murthy also daughter of Narayan Murthy co-founder of Infosys which is India's IT giant um has shares in a childcare firm in the UK called Coro Kids now why is that a problem we know that Akshata Murthy is the daughter of a billionaire and she does have business interests so why is this a problem now This is because Sarah last month when the budget was out by the chancellor Mr Jeremy Hunt he also announced a pilot scheme for child care and child minders in the UK the scheme overall has a an intention or an objective to promote or to encourage women uh, employees and professionals to go to work to be able to do that they need reliable child care and the child care system in the uk has often been criticized for being extremely expensive and very few child minders uh, available and so this scheme was meant to incentivize or push in close to 500 billion sterling pound into uh, supporting child care now it so happens that one of the beneficiaries and especially six private companies which will benefit uh with relate with regards to this particular pilot scheme including is including of coro kids which is um part owned or or rather has um uh, a stake by akshata murthy who uh, hasn't who and the and the allegation is that rishi sunak as prime minister whilst encouraging the scheme did not declare that his well shall we say wife's firm or the firm which his family has interests in will also benefit from this scheme now number 10 says that this is not necessary and that it is a play up by the opposition both the labor party as well as some other parties because according to them uh, rishi sunak has already in the register of ministerial uh, declaration of interests mentioned such a thing but this report is yet to be published So now what will happen is that the commissioner of the standards committee of the parliament will review right. the claims will check whether there is any breakage or uh, whether there is a breach of rules by the UK right. prime minister and a further action or a decision will be made now. All right thanks so much Radhika this news also breaking on a day when uh, the pr- the prime minister Rishi Sunak relaunched his plans to make math education for all until the age of 18 compulsory the UK prime minister on Monday 
said that an anti-math mindset was holding back the economy. This is the announced review of the subject in the country. Rishi Sunak will be uh, uh, held a meeting today to ensure that students till the age of 18 get some kind of math. He also suggested that uh, people should not make jokes about being bad at math in order to change attitudes towards numeracy. At present, students studying in UK schools have the option to drop math at the age of 16. However, the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak wants to change that. In his first pol uh, policy speech in 2023, he had talked about wanting to make the study of math compulsory for all students up to the age of 18. We're one of the few developed countries where young people don't routinely study some form of maths up to the age of 18. They do it in Australia, Canada, France, Germany, Finland, Japan, Norway, and America. Why should we accept any less for our children? Of course we shouldn't. That's why I set out in January that we're going to change the way our system works so that everyone in our country will study some form of maths all the way to 18. So we're going to look at what 16 to 18 year olds around the world are learning and we're going to listen to employers and ask them what they say the math skills are that they need. And that's why today I'm appointing a new expert group who will help us identify the core maths content that our 16 to 18 year olds need and whether we need a new specific qualification to support that. All right, and uh, let's get you the news back home. Amidst the ongoing political restlessness in the Mahavikas or the MVA, the Congress General Secretary K.C. Venugopal called on the Shiv Sena President, the former Chief uh, Minister Uddhav Thakre, that is the uh, UBT segment of the Shiv Sena at his home, Matushri, uh, a meeting that's been seen as an icebreaker of the party shared differences over the V.D. Savarkar issue and also an extension of Rahul Gandhi's efforts to unite the opposition against the BJP government ahead of the 2024 polls. Entire opposition party, this is what the general consensus. There may be differences between political parties. We have our own ideology, Shiva Sena have their own ideology, NCP has their own ideology, like all political parties have their own ideology, but the country is facing bigger issues. This type of atmosphere we never witness in this country. So there is a need of entire opposition. We have discussed all these issues and we are all in agreement that we have to go together to fight against this forces. हम जब दोस्ती निभाते हैं, तो सिर्फ दोस्ती नहीं रहती, एक रिश्ता होता है, जो हमने 25-30 साल बीजेपी के साथ निभाया था। दुर्भाग्य की बात है कि वो उनको समझ में नहीं आया, आई बात कि मित्र कौन है और विरोधी कौन है, ठीक है? वो उनका नसीब, लेकिन हम आगे जाकर अपने देश को, देश में जो प्रज उसकी लड़ाई लड़ने के लिए हम साथ में रहेंगे और मुझे पक्का भरोसा है कि अब देश में हर नागरिक के मन में एक सवाल उठा है प्रश्न उठा है और वो सब लोग हमें साथ देंगे and then the Karnataka Congress President D.K. Sevakumar filed his nomination papers from the Kanakpura constituency uh, for the state assembly polls. He also said that the party, his party, will surpass the 150 seats mark in the 224 member Karnataka Legislative Assembly before filing his nomination. He held a roadshow in his constituency from where he's a seven time MLA. Ex exuding confidence about forming the government in the state uh, on the basis of rooting out corruption. He also welcomed the former BJP leader, the six-time MLA, Jagdish Shetar, into the Congress, claiming that more MLAs wanted to join the party, but the Congress does not have, quote, political space. Karnataka Congress President D.K. Shivkumar, Karnataka's richest politician and the man hoping to be Karnataka's next Chief Minister, pulled out all the stops for his nomination today in Kanakpura, about 70 kilometers from Bengaluru. Thousands of supporters, over a hundred cars were part of his roadshow show today 
as he declared assets of rupees 1214.94 crore rupees. For DKS, as he's known, it's a 24 7 job. This morning, a huge morale booster for the party with an ex BJP minister, seven time MLA, and Lingayat leader Jagdish Shetter joining the Congress. The congressman for all seasons has done it all, from spending 52 days in jail to being the party's main fundraiser in Karnataka. He swarmed with ticket requests and more. They are misusing those agencies. Hmm. Even the agency, I don't want to name any one of them. Hmm. They also admit that yes, they are, we have to work against our conscience, hmm. but we have to go ahead with our bosses. So they are doing their job without the, uh, as not as per the law. Mm. It's just harassing. Correct. They are taking a political call. It will be very f unfair on them also in the future. The seven-time legislator is an MLA from Kanakpura, a constituency that was once a JDS bastion. He defeated H.D. Kumaraswamy from here in 1999. And now, after seven consecutive wins, he's thrown an open challenge to the ruling BJP to defeat him after the Saffron Party has pitted a formidable candidate, Ara Ashoka, a six-time MLA and a Lingayat leader, against him. Belonging to the Lantiling Vokaliga community, DK is reaching out to other communities too. En route to Kanakpura, he calls up a Lingayat seer to seek Blessings. In his words, he claims he is every Lingayat's son. Right now, for DKS, his car of refurbished endeavor is virtually his home till the 10th of May. Meals are grabbed on the move. Oh, it is not my diet. Whatever my wife uh, cooks and gives to me, okay. uh, she is my diet, dietist, uh, dentist, uh, <laughs> dietist. <laughs> oh, okay. what, whatever she gives to me, I eat. That's all. After a quick power nap, he makes a pit stop at the entry point of Kanakpura constituency, where his supporters celebrate his entry by bursting crackers in full filmy style. He hops onto a bullet motorcycle and rides to Kinkarama Temple. A deity traditionally worshipped by DK Shiv Kumar's family. However, while challenge number one is winning the Karnataka election, desperately needed for any hopes of a larger Congress revival. For DK Shiv Kumar, the larger battle also lies within with nemesis Siddharamaya, a battle he is keenly aware of. Karnataka is set for a big fight. One of that constituencies is Kanakpura, where we reported from. In fact, we showed you where Mr. DK Shivkumar filed his nomination. Tremendous response on ground. The poll pulse here on ground also says it's once again going to be Mr. DK Shivkumar. In fact, speaking to him, exclusive conversations with Mr. D.K. Shivkumar, whether that is Lingayats or Vokaligas, caste doesn't matter here. It's about an individual. And D.K. Shivkumar has given an open challenge to the BJP, who thinks they have fielded a formidable candidate who's our Ashoka for a big fight right here in Kanakpura constituency. In Kanakpura, with Kumar Shrija for NDTV. And the BJP, meanwhile, has released the third list of 10 candidates. They have fielded Mahesh Tenganakai from the Hubli Dharwad Central. The seat that was held by Jagdish Shetter, the disgruntled BJP leader Shetter, has 
finally put speculations to rest as he joined the grand old party then in the presence of the Congress uh, President Malik Arjuna Kharge and the State Congress Chief D.K. Sivakumar. Soon after joining the Congress, he accused the BJP of not treating senior leaders like him properly. He said that he would win this Hubli Dharwad seat for the seventh time in the upcoming Karnataka poll. So now we have one former chief minister, an ex-deputy chief minister and four legislators who have quit the BJP over their uh, ticket allotments under the BJP's new strategy of bringing in new faces. Now, will this strategy pay off? The chief minister, Bomai, uh, claims that the defection of these leaders will not impact the party because they are a Kada based party.